Now reveal the deadly police shooting in Charlotte. You can hear the wife's plea right on it. Don't shoot him. He didn't do anything. It is the family's video tonight why authorities are refusing to release their own. Also tonight, the narrow escape in New York City. The pedestrians kicking one of those bombs placed right on the sidewalk. They had no idea. And tonight, how authorities now believe the suspect got those bombs into the city. The school bus crashed late today, flipping over. Pictures coming in now. Three days to the debate, who was seen walking into Trump Tower at Hillary Clinton, the reality star and billionaire who now says he will be in the front row for her. And the first lady's passport hacked and 500 million personal email accounts. Tonight here, the new warning now. What authorities want you to do, and it's more than your password. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin tonight with the chilling video from Charlotte, not seen until today. The wife recording as her husband was shot and killed by police. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? There have been two very different accounts of what happened. The city tonight bracing for protests after demonstrations have already turned violent and deadly. And now this new video sparking outrage tonight. ABC's Eva Pilgrim is in Charlotte. He has no weapon. Don't shoot him. Tonight, Keith Scott's wife begging Charlotte police not Don't to shoot, shoot her husband. Don't shoot him. He didn't do anything. Officers, gun drawn, move in on Scott's truck. He doesn't have a gun. He has a TBI. He's not going to do anything to you guys. He just took his medicine. She's pleading with her husband to get out of his truck. Keith, don't let them break the windows. Come on out the car. Keith, don't do it. Keith, get out the car. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Keith, 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 don't you do it. Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? Scott's wife in disbelief. He better not be dead. He better not be dead. I know that much. I know that much he better not be dead. I'm not gonna come near you. I'm gonna record though. I'm not coming near you. I'm gonna record though. He better be alive because I'm coming. You better be alive. How about that? Rakia Scott documenting it all on her cell phone. Her husband motionless on the ground. These are the police officers that shot my husband and he better live. He better live because he didn't do nothing to them. That's okay. Did y'all call the police? I mean, did y'all call an ambulance? Just minutes earlier, Keith Scott was sitting in a parking lot waiting for his son's school bus Don't when officers in the neighborhood Don't arrived to serve a search warrant on someone else. <laughs> for days, protesters and Scott's family have called on the police to release officer body cam and dash cam of the shooting. Charlotte's police chief arguing the video doesn't answer all the questions and shouldn't be released during the investigation. If I were to put it out indiscriminately, and it doesn't give you good context, it can inflame the situation and make it even worse. It will exacerbate the, the backlash. It will increase the distrust. The family who has seen the police video says it's not clear what was in Keith Scott's hand, but the police department says Scott was armed and that this image taken after the shooting shows the gun they recovered. But from the other angle, this video shows what may be that same object far from the body, raising more questions than it answers. Late today, President Obama on the growing tensions. If we join hands and if we do things right, if we maintain our dignity and we continue to appeal to the better angels of this nation, progress will be made. And Eva Pilgrim joins us from the scene of that shooting again tonight. And Eva, I want to get back to something in that video. We heard Keith Scott's wife mention TBI, traumatic brain injury. That's right, David. You heard her mention in that video a brain injury and something about medication. The family tells us Scott suffered a brain injury during a motorcycle accident last year. Since then, he sometimes stuttered and sometimes also forgot what he said. Tonight, this investigation into the shooting has now been turned over to the state and the city of Charlotte once again enforcing a curfew of midnight. David. Eva, thank you. We are also learning more tonight about the female police officer now charged with first-degree manslaughter in Tulsa. 
Officer Betty Shelby is out of jail free on bond tonight. She's been charged after the nation saw this video. A father, his hands in the air moments before he was shot and killed. ABC's Clayton Sandell tonight with the case now being made by prosecutors this evening, saying the officer escalated the confrontation. The shocking moment that ended Terrence Crutcher's life <laughs> has also tonight turned Betty Shelby from police officer to defendant, surrendering on manslaughter charges overnight before being released on a $50,000 bond. Officer Shelby, although now charged, is presumed to be innocent until a judge or a jury determines otherwise. Prosecutors say Shelby became emotionally involved to the point that she overreacted. This guy's still walking. She says she fired when Crutcher reached inside his car window, but attorneys for Crutcher's family not only believe that window was up, they point out Shelby had already checked for a weapon, a point conceded by the officer's own attorney. She cautiously checked from the driver's side, the back, the back seat and then the front seat. The family says that means even if the car window was down, the officer should have known there was no gun inside. And David, Tulsa police still aren't saying whether they believe that window was up or down. As for Officer Shelby, if she's convicted, she's facing four years to life in prison. David. Clayton Sandell tonight. Clayton, thank you. And there is also disturbing video here in New York City tonight after those bombs were placed here and in New Jersey. Pedestrians seen kicking one of the bombs without even knowing it. Here's the video, people walking by, you can see the person kicking the pressure cooker before that other bomb exploded in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan. And tonight we have now learned how investigators believe the suspect got his bombs into New York City on the train. Here's ABC's Lindsay Janice. Tonight, this new surveillance video showing that unexploded pressure cooker, one man even kicking it. Authorities have scoured the footage looking for clues and witnesses, including the moment the suspected bomber plants the device. Tonight, ABC News learning authorities now believe Ahmad Rahami took the train into Manhattan, carrying those explosive devices from New Jersey. And now more questions about whether authorities missed a crucial warning two years ago. The alleged bomber's father repeating claims he told the FBI about his son's apparent radicalization after a trip to Pakistan and Afghanistan. Mohammed Rahami telling the Associated Press, I found a change in his personality. His mind was not the same. He had become bad. The FBI saying it did follow up in 2014, but Mr. Rahami recanted the allegations. And David, tonight the FBI still unable to question Rahami himself. He remains in the hospital in critical condition. David? Lindsay Janis tonight. Thank you, Lindsay. We are tracking a severe storm threat as we begin this weekend tonight from Texas all the way north. Two confirmed EF1 tornadoes now in Utah. This one in Washington Terrace. Heavy rain in the Midwest, severe flooding in Green, Iowa. The system is moving east at this hour. So let's get right to meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking it all. Rob? Hi, David. That storm that spawned the tornadoes in Utah, as you mentioned, is on the move. We've got severe thunderstorm watches posted for eastern Wyoming, for uh, Nebraska, South Dakota. By tomorrow, strong storms are expected from Minnesota all the way into Texas. And for California, our first big Santa Ana wind event is going to peak on Sunday. Hot, dry winds over 50 miles per hour. Fire watch posted there. And here in the east, a summer-like heat is over. A fall cool finally coming this weekend. David. Right. Rob Marciano with us on a Friday. Rob, thank you. Three days now until the big first debate right here on ABC. It is expected 100 million people could watch Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Tonight, who was seen going into Trump Tower to help? Also this evening, another billionaire and reality star, Mark Cuban, revealing he will be sitting in the front row to root for Clinton. It all comes amid a new poll showing Clinton leading Trump by seven points nationally. The battleground showing a much tighter race in Ohio and Florida. ABC Cecilia Vega with new reporting tonight, the strategies on both sides to get at their opponent. When Donald Trump takes that debate stage, Hillary Clinton won't be the only rival staring him down. Her campaign offering a coveted ticket to another reality show billionaire. You got to deal. Done. I'm out. This I'm out. Shark Tank's Mark Cuban right there in the front row taunting Trump. I'll sit where they sit me and um, enjoy the moment. Let's put it this way. If he came on Shark Tank, I wouldn't make, it, I wouldn't make the investment. Team Trump 
unimpressed. What's he going to do, make funny faces at Donald Trump? She's trying to populate the audience, I suppose, with people who may rattle Donald Trump. Good luck with that. With just three days to go, Clinton's campaign is trying to get under Trump's skin. Today, releasing this new ad using Trump's own words on women. I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. She's a slob. She ate like a pig. It's the same subject that threw Trump off course in his very first debate. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs. Today, Trump's campaign laying the groundwork for a more serious image, revealing his potential Supreme Court picks. Unlike the first list of all-white candidates, this one includes a Latino and an African-American judge. Trump also receiving an endorsement from his old rival, Ted Cruz. Monday's debate will be Trump's 12th, and he says he doesn't want to overprepare. I've seen people prepare so much that they get up there and they get locked here, they can't speak. Still, he canceled a campaign stop today to hunker down in Trump Tower. Former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani leading the strategy session. Let's have the American people uh, for once actually see a person actually be themselves rather than coached and uh, manipulated. No mock debates, just rapid fire questions and reviewing video of Clinton's past performances. Clinton, a veteran debater with more than 40 under her belt, is holding mock debates, immersing herself in briefing books and studying her opponent. And Cecilia Vega with us live tonight, both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton down uh, prepping for these debates. Clinton has spent the past two days in prep, but tonight her campaign announcing she's going to travel to Charlotte on Sunday, the day before the debate. David, North Carolina, a battleground state. This is also aimed at reaching out to a core group for her African-American voters. But no doubt this is part debate strategy. You can bet this issue of police shootings will come up on that stage on Monday night, David. All right, Cecilia Vega, who anchors this newscast on the weekend. Cecilia, thank you. Overseas tonight and to Syria, a little girl rescued from the rubble of a collapsed building destroyed in an airstrike. The five-year-old covered in dust and blood, the newest face of the human toll in Aleppo, recovering in the hospital tonight. Her family, including three sisters and a brother, reportedly among dozens killed, with that ceasefire now crumbling. Back here at home tonight, new developments in that massive hack attack. And as we're on the air, we have learned that authorities now suspect Russian hackers were behind the 500 million personal email accounts that have now been hacked. Yahoo now being sued tonight. And all this news coming the same week we learned hackers posted First Lady Michelle Obama's passport online. ABC's Pierre Thomas tonight with the new warning. Experts want you to change more than just your password. Tonight, a half billion Yahoo customers, many in the U.S., coping with the stunning hack. Those passwords, dates of birth, even security questions and answers, all now exposed to potential ID thieves and worse. Yahoo says the cyber attack was state-sponsored. and It comes as brazen hackers even posted that scan of Michelle Obama's passport online. The FBI is also investigating that case, but the critical question now, how do average people protect themselves? I'm worried that people are going to throw up their hands and think, oh, there's nothing I can do. It's hopeless, and it really is not at the individual level. In the case of the Yahoo breach, change your password, and don't use the same password for other personal accounts. Change your security questions and make them more difficult. And employ security protection software, making sure it's up to date and always running something many consumers don't do. Attackers count on the fact that people don't patch and update their systems. Great advice, Pierre Thomas with us live tonight. And Pierre, your source is telling you we now believe that Russian hackers are behind all this? Yes, David, authorities suspect the Russians are behind this massive attack. This comes on the heels of the Russians being accused of hacking the DNC. David, the story is only getting bigger. All right, Pierre Thomas, and you'll stay on it. Pierre, thank you. Meantime, President Obama today making good on his threat to veto the 9-11 bill. The president today rejecting the measure that would allow survivors and the families of 9-11 victims to sue the government of Saudi Arabia. The president is concerned it will leave the U.S. open to similar lawsuits. Congress is now expected to override the veto. There was still much more ahead on World News tonight. This Friday, a scary moment in the skies. The world's largest passenger plane caught in dangerous crosswinds on approach. What the pilot does next, and you'll see it right here. It's incredible. Also, the school bus crashed late today. The bus flipping over students inside. The picture's coming in right now. We have more on that. And we sure needed this tonight. The pint-sized Lions fan who got a great big bear hug. It's America strong. And watch this. What happens next? Head to the field.
What if one piece of kale could protect you from diabetes? What if one sit-up could prevent heart disease? One. Wishful thinking, right? But there is one step you can take to help prevent another serious disease, pneumococcal pneumonia. If you are 50 or older, one dose of the Prevnar 13 vaccine can help protect you from pneumococcal pneumonia, an illness that can cause coughing, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and may even put you in the hospital. Even if you've already been vaccinated with another pneumonia vaccine, Prevnar 13 may help provide additional protection. Prevnar 13 is used in adults 18 and older to help prevent infections from 13 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. You should not receive Prevnar 13 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. If you have a weakened immune system, you may have a lower response to the vaccine. Common side effects were pain, redness or swelling at the injection site, limited arm movement, fatigue, headache, vomiting, muscle or joint pain, less appetite, chills or rash. Get this one done. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 13 today. The end of quarter clearance sales going on now at Lowe's.